Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is HP Discover 2013. This is uh, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of HP Discover. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and it, as always, we want to get uh, expertise, the management, the, the domain experts, customers, thought leaders, and we have longtime CUBE alumni here. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and our good friend Jim Gantier is here, our newly promoted Jim Gantier, uh, now the uh, <laughs> vice president the global marketing for HP servers, all servers, right? It was ISS, you were Correct. very focused on ISS, and now you got the Still entire in. portfolio. Now, now you just got a couple other things to Got a place in love. your heart. You always have a place <laughs> in your heart for the pieces that you built, I know that well. So uh, welcome back, Jim, it's really Thanks, a pleasure, pleasure seeing you. Good, good to be with you guys again. Yeah, so a lot of keynotes this week that you were helping, uh, both, both delivering, helping prepare for, and, yep. and so forth. What's the reaction been? Uh, reaction has been awesome. So I'll start with probably the top line messages. We had a major press release this week and a major press event. And one of the things we covered was primarily what our HP storage team is doing both from a VSA, sorry, a virtual SAN appliance. So uh, that and along with what they're also doing with flash based or 100% flash based storage. But also as part of that from our team, we had a major announcement in terms of our entry level servers. We announced our ML310 which is basically a great reliability, manageability server that has all the goodness of Gen 8, you know, the three month or three to five month ROI, the uh, 30 days of their lives back and doubling the compute per watt. We announced our 320, and our 320 product is actually a single application, extremely compact, compact being 15 inches, server that's built for embedded environments. Embedded environments can be transportation, it can be medical, it can be factory automation, it can even be military. So you know how you and I like to joke about planes, trains, and automobiles? You can also start to think uh, home fees and AWACS. And then probably the one that was the quote unquote darling of the show the baby. was the HP ProLiant <laughs> microserver. As a matter of fact, you said baby. Dave Donatelli on stage referred to it as baby's first data center. Um, <laughs> And what he meant by that is it really is a SMB oriented server. And the reason why that's important is in the next, about the next five years, there'll be about 5.2 million new SMB users that come online. And we want to make sure that every single one of them, you know, basically uses ProLiant. So what we've done is we take all the goodness of Gen 8, we put it in a very small, compact form factor. She's whisper quiet, it's drop dead gorgeous in terms of look and feel. Oh, and by the way, it's personally customizable. You can swap out the colors. It comes in HP Blue, by the way, and uh, various others. But we went one step above that. We also made it quasi-converged. And when I say quasi-converged, even SMBs want easy to set up, easy to manage, easy to maintain solutions. So we partnered with Bethany Mayer's team, and we came up with a, uh, and it's referred to as the HP PS1810. It's a switch that was designed to fit right on top, so it looks like an integrated, almost stereo system, I think is what one customer called it. But the fun part is when you plug that in, to the servers or any of the micro servers, it will find all the micro servers, it will set them up, and then, again, back to the whole thing of intelligence and automation, easy to set up, easy to manage, easy to maintain, easy to update. Yeah, Donatelli was great on stage, you saw my tweet about how, I, I saw that. Uh, how good way, he thanks. was and, and how humorous he was. Uh, that's, uh, did you write those jokes? Um, <laughs> no comment, uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was all day. I'll well, you know, the best one, <laughs> the one I loved is he held up the, you know, he goes, I'm partial to HP Blue, and the reason I'm laughing so much, and it was a red one, and the reason I'm laughing is when he was on CNBC, Joe Kernan asked him, what, what, with the moonshot, I remember that what one. color does it come in? You know, that's the, Any the, color the, you yeah. want, as long as you're going to buy a whole bunch of them. <laughs> we actually had CNBC here, uh, uh, let's see, I think we had them on uh, yesterday. Becky Quick was out on the show floor, which incidentally was right next to the moonshot uh, launch pad area, and uh, she was interviewing Meg and a whole bunch of others. But yeah, the joke is, or not the joke, the actuality is the microserver is available today, and it is available in any color you like, and for all of those grads out there, or the new dads and grads since holidays are coming, hey, get somebody a uh, get somebody a data center. It used to be buy a, you know buy a VAX and start writing programs, and now no. it's you know buy a little base. So you, buy a microserver. So you so you're also in Forbes. Picture of you in Forbes. Uh, Forbes. Uh, a friend of mine Forbes. posted that. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, that was from the launch event. You were on stage with uh, Dave uh, Dave Donatelli uh -huh. and David Scott. Yep. Um, that's not a server thing. That was a storage announcement. So well, talk about why you were there and explain the connection. Uh, so the, actually, connection's a great phrase. It's because of that whole converge piece. So if you look at what Dave had announced, and um, you know, in essence, he had two big things. He talked about how we were all moving to Flash. You guys have heard what we've done with Gen 8, right? So we've been working in collaboration with the storage team, hence that converge approach. We introduced the industry's first flat SAM by having three-par, simple, efficient, agile, and autonomic, and having 
Blades, which has Virtual Connect and all the wonderful value props there. Between those two, we can eliminate $185,000 worth of cost. We can get rid of all of that complexity. So when David talked about his all-based, or I should say all-flash-based solution, that's another example of collaborative caching. The second thing he talked about was his VSA product. Those VSA products, and David actually said this on stage, leverage ProLiant. Why not use the volume, the velocity, and the tonnage sales of ProLiant to help move more software-defined uh, storage? So a lot of folks might not know, I mean, you're, you're always smiling and, and uh, very presentable on theCUBE, which we love, by the way. But wow. you guys were smiling on stage, and I want to just share, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you guys are smiling, and it's, there's an inner core there, and, and I want to go there in a minute, because you got servers, Moonshot kind of teases out what's being thought differently. You got Donatelli, interested in storage with Davis Scott. So connect the dots, servers, networking, and storage. How does all that kind of fit in with this whole Moonshot? Because Moonshot is really getting a lot of, capturing everyone's imagination. You guys are putting it out there, thinking differently. How is the servers and all that storage and networking going to connect? Just share with the folks the vision. So, uh, more than vision, we're actually the commencement of execution here. So when you think about Moonshot, we took a fundamentally radically different approach. And you guys know the quants, right? So 89% less energy, 80% um, less space, and the fact that we can do it for with 97% less complexity. Beyond that, the reason why we're able to do that is because if you look at a data center, it's servers, it's storage, it's networking, it's services, and it's power and cooling all combined together. So phase one of what you're seeing with Moonshot is that new approach. We've addressed the server and the storage and the networking components, but as you start to look at that over time, and you look at that with data center optics, who says that what uh, David announced on Monday couldn't perhaps be running on moonshots with the VSA components? Who says that storage, when you look at it at a data center optic, will have storage inside moonshot, he'll have storage inside 3PAR along with the other components, there'll be one management construct to run it all, and we all still have that same problem around power. So as what you're starting to see yeah. is that roadmap of what used to be four individual silos all coming together as a unified whole yeah. to redefine the and, and that's your vision, issues. And that's your vision you guys have put forth a while back ago, but you are executing on it, so I didn't, kind of didn't mean to suggest that, but I want to then go now to the customers. Yeah. So here is this show, is a lot of customer activity. Why is the customer so excited? We've had multiple people on here telling us off camera, the convergence message is really resonating. It's not just service, it's the data center conversation. So what are you hearing here at this show around customers' conversations around the moonshot, the integration, the convergence, and what's different now than last year? Uh, so let's see, if I could distill this down to its bare essence. The one thing we're hearing is, and, and Dave talked about three big trends, right? He talked about converged infrastructure, which you guys know because you were there with us at the beginning. We've come up with and we've been serially executing and making proof points against. He talked about cloud, which we're you know, one of the leaders in that space with our cloud system product. But the one thing I'm hearing over and over again is the third piece, which is the whole software defined data center. VSA, which was David Scott in the HP storage teams division, that's an example of software-defined storage. Um, Moonshot is a software-defined server. Um, Bethany and the HP networking team, they're delivering and executing on their versions of software-defined networking. So if you look at what's common between all of us, people are starting to see those three big trends and they're starting to see common proof points that each of the, our teams are bringing out to go make that real. And, and OpenStack too is a big theme that comes oh, through all this stuff. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Well, that and the entire management construct right. along with what we're also doing with power and cooling. So to answer your point, if it's I were to find points. a red thread, that would be one of the, or I should say, one of the three red threads. What we're doing in cloud, what we're doing with Converge infrastructure, and what we're definitely doing collectively and individually as teams with software-defined so data So just extracting from that, from that an additional data point, you're also saying that this year proof points are emerging. Um, real world products, real world execution, real world customers. And as you can probably tell, they're like right yeah. over there. There's an entire wall of customers that have gone down that path and will never go back to the old way of doing things. We love to pat ourselves on the back here in theCUBE, so we're gonna, we'll, we'll start here. So Dave and I were talking three years ago about convergence, yes. and then we started going down this IO-centric infrastructure, and then uh, I think we keep on coining the term software-led infrastructure, mainly because it's with modern day convergence. So what you, got, you guys have effectively gone there. Correct. You've taken convergence that was defined by HP. Correct. Okay. Back in November it's, of 2009. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it didn't, Flash wasn't there, so there's a lot of little nuances that were emerging, right? So now you have Flash, you have software-defined storage, so you're there, so you are now modernized the convergence. And, and, and we're thinking about it at a data center level. We're not thinking about, and you heard you know, David yeah. say this very eloquently, <laughs> that's why the server person was there. 
hey, it really is about looking at things at a data central level and treating them as true resource pools. And how do you move that stuff back and forth easily and seamlessly between the three of us? Although, I do have to give them props. Um, one of the funniest things that happened at the press release is we had the equivalent of what we call a kabuki drop, where you have a curtain and then yeah. you know somebody snaps their fingers kabuki and things theater. drop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and when he did the VSA launch, it was hilarious because when the curtain dropped, it was just basically a Lexan box that had nothing in it, and the headline above it was VSA, no hardware required, nor included. <laughs> so the audience got a really good laugh out of that, <laughs> along with uh, you know Dave's uh, baby's first data center. Yeah, I like that little cage that had nothing in it, you know, that Correct. box. But, but what he did say is, if you are going to go put it on hardware, it runs best on ProLiant. <laughs> Dave, they, had, they unveiled the you know, like normal casing, when you put boxes in, and it's empty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nothing in it. It was hilarious. Hey, I want to talk about cloud a little bit. Sure. One of the early Cube uh, interviews we did with you was with Carnegie Mellon. Yes. And you remember that one. Oh, I do. about how you guys were spinning up a private cloud in you know, a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, that was pre-Moonshot. Uh, it was uh, pre-Gen 8. Correct. It was uh, kind of not maybe pre-OpenStack in the sense that OpenStack really didn't have you know, clearly the momentum that it has now. Um, I think cer certainly uh, before HP Public Cloud yep. and even Converge Cloud, right? So now that's a lot of tech. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Subsequent to the whatever it was, two or three years ago even. Yeah. So, so this Carnegie Mellon example was pretty narrowly focused on private cloud. So given all these developments and all this innovation that you guys have, how is that affecting customers? How is it affecting cloud deployments? What so, changes? So let's actually talk about the customers to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, probably when you and I talked about that, along with uh, John, I think we were in San Francisco, yep. we probably had you know, a couple of hundreds of customers. We're now close to a thousand cloud system customers. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you see that rate going at the, at the uh, I guess we'll call it slope that it's on, is because of the value proposition. When you can take a cloud and easily deploy it in a couple of, you know, less than an hour or so, when you can easily manage it, when you can take all those resources and redeploy them back in the pool so you never have stranded resources, that's why customers are really adopting it. Now, that's where we are with the customers. In terms of the technology, in terms of the other things, when you look at the success that we've been having with Moonshot, think of Moonshot as enabling a lot of the web and hosting providers. So as they're providing clouds for customers, that's going to be something that we can do. And then to just give you an example that would touch both of those, let's pick on a, um, or let's look at a partner. Take an example of Savvis. Okay, which is a CenturyLink company, and actually Brent Julek was here yeah, he was talking. About, oh, he was, yeah. perfect, okay, yeah. He's actually a really good spokesperson and one of the folks that... Uh, Moonshot customer. Moonshot customer. Yeah. So if I were to put a red thread between Cloud System Matrix plus Moonshot plus a customer, one of the things, and it's an HP only unique that we can do, is that when someone has Cloud System Matrix and they require additional capability, they can burst. They can burst to a partner like a Savvis. But when you look at Savvis, who's also a web hoster, they're going to have Moonshot. So now what you've got is that you know trifecta, whereby we can help them with their existing public, private, hybrid, or soon to be future class of cloud, and nobody else can do that. Well, to the, to that last point, uh, you'll love this. I'm talking to one of your, one of your customers, uh, one of your competitors recently, and asked them about Moonshot, mm -hmm. and they they sort of poo pooed it. They said, Yeah, we could build a Moonshot too. We just don't see the use cases. We don't see the value proposition. So we said, uh, All right, let's ask the customer what he thinks. So Brent said. Well, here's what I do with it. I put it, to, point it to my web apps. Yeah. It cuts my cost, cuts my power, cuts I me. Mean, just gave us throughout these metrics. Right. And so, you must love the fact that these other guys aren't seeing the use cases for it. Well, yeah. so don't give them any more hints. Let them continue <laughs> to think there's not a, a market there, and we'll just continue to satisfy customers with Moonshot and get all that revenue in Unit Count. So on the <laughs> HP keynote, Meg Whitman's uh, keynote, her keynote at HP Discover uh -huh. opening night, mm -hmm. she mentioned the HP.com example. Correct. So, come on, tell us really what's happening. No, no, the I, whole I, site's being run, the whole traffic. Yeah, the numbers uh, were no, the, enormous. No, the site will be, so the numbers are enormous, and the savings so are take enormous, us through. which is why Let's Ramon is interested. Out. So here's what we wound up doing. HP.com in and of itself is a site that gets millions of hits per day, yeah. okay? It was a traditionally run on, I'm going to use the word, legacy infrastructure, basically Rack Unix servers. Well, yeah, oh. and uh, in essence, when we first showed our IT team the uh, Moonshot capabilities, they were kind of blown away, and they decided yeah, to that's do... That's where we yeah. give me a box, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Same line. Yeah. But the idea is they said, okay, let's go try a couple of, uh, I guess we'll call it smaller apps on this. They did a try before we trust, and they basically said, wow, this is you know pretty, pretty impressive. So by the time that we had gotten to launch day, you guys were with us on launch day, we were already running 12% of the website 
on basically a moonshot enclosure. And we were doing so with the equivalent of probably a couple of light bulbs. Now, having said that, since then, they've been incrementally moving more and more. So we're not 100% running yet on uh, Moonshot, but they've got plans to get us there very shortly. And when they do, they anticipate that we'll be able to take uh, you know, double-digit millions of hits. We'll be able to do that with the equivalent of maybe a dozen some odd light bulbs. And they will have dramatically reduced the amount of space requirement and also reduced the amount of complexity of what they used to have to do before with everything ranging from the servers, the storage, the networking, the various components. Let's talk about the systems business and how it's evolving. Yeah. I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to predict now, uh, you know, we love to make these predictions on, on the cube, but I'm going to predict the entire way in which uh, companies organize, vendors organize to sell servers and storage and networks is going to completely change. It, and we, it, it's already starting. It's starting, but yeah. we still have sort of the old line, you know, uh, and you guys are starting to, to bring that together. Well, and Donatelli's driving well, we, a lot of that, uh, I know. But, yes, he is, yeah. and he's, been doing. He sees it happening, right? So Well, he sees it happening and he's making sure that you know we're putting assets in place. And the example I wanted to highlight there is the fact that we've now created a converged systems team. So one of the fun parts about... Yeah, Tom know, Joyce was on and we talked oh, about perfect, that. Oh, right? perfect, there you yeah. go. So in essence, it's not going to be just a, hey, we have all these converged infrastructure products. We're going to have an organization whose entire mission in life is to ensure that those products are actually bundled up as solutions. They're been bundled up as, I guess we'll call it one piece deliverables. And now we're going to help go change the sales motion. We're going to go help accelerate that. And we're going to be able to show that, hey, when you really have innovation like we do, you can change basically the economics. And that's a sign of my prediction coming true, right? Because that's but it's still an overlay organization, right? And you guys are doing that, IBM's done that, but they they put Andy Munch on charge. I wouldn't call it an overlay and, and maybe I'm I'm being pedantic. The way that we see the model operating is, we're going to go do, and we have for quite a while, right? Especially in the server space. We don't see ourselves as the server team. We see ourselves as the provider of compute. You've heard Bethany talk about her Sentinel product. You've heard David Scott talk about VSA. You've heard him talk about you know, some of the things that, uh, what was his phrase, which made me smile. I don't have to go out and create the world's best servers. I've got the team that does that for me, which helps accelerate and leverage. So, we're going to go create those products, but what Tom and his organization are going to do is actually turn that into a very easy to comprehend, easy to sell sales motion that'll help accelerate that trend. Yeah, and so you're right, it is more than an overlay because he's yeah. got more, more responsibility and juice than, than that. But still, you, if you add up his P&L and you add up all the other P&Ls that, that are you know, feeding his P&L, you'd be double counting. So you have to be careful about that. So I'm just saying, over time, that's going to morph. But more so than just server storage and networking coming and together. Services. And, and services. And services, for sure. <laughs> that was a good move you guys made. Was it last summer or two summers ago, putting the services you know, underneath Don, Donatelli? Smart move. We, we, John and I talked about that yep. on theCUBE right on. But I see even more. So you guys in IBM are you know, big. I mean, we're talking substantial businesses, you know, $28 billion type of businesses, you know, yep. order of magnitude. And that business is changing. Not only are things converging, but it's becoming much more software intensive. You know, you've got the OpenStack is now this new layer, which is a huge, we can have a conversation about that too, that I'd love to, mm -hmm. because of the whole dynamic with VMware and CloudStack and Amazon and all that stuff. Right. But that's, and I see this platform emerging, you know, converged systems as a platform. And we're talking about open APIs, plugging into it, um, and then analytics, driving a lot of value there. Vertica, autonomy, and, and that's another the part of the organization. Launch. And I just see your whole business changing dramatically over the next decade. And we think that's a good thing. It's a great thing because, we think it's, that's a good because thing. the value is really going to shift to where it belongs. Yeah. You know, the software, you know, and connections to the business process. You're, you're, you're dead on, and I'll give you another real world example of that. A real world example of that, and I'm going to do the product solutions, and then uh, I guess we'll call it overlay of the software piece. Mm -hmm. So if you look at something like an SL4500, right? An SL4500, if you lovingly known as Argos was the code name, which, okay, now you recognize what it is. So the net is, is that if you look at a typical deployment using just standard JBOD and competitive products from that other Texas server team, it's about a $3 million installation in order to do roughly about, you know, we'll call it five petabytes worth of data. If you look at what you do with Argos, and because of the innovation we've driven, it's a $2 million, hence $1 million savings, dramatic reduction in all the electromechanical. But you take that and what Tom and uh, his team are doing, they're going to go add autonomy. They're going to go add Vertica on top. They're going to turn that into a true packaged appliance. And now when you take the electromechanical cost and complexity and you add the wonderful stuff that we get only out of, you know, basically an autonomy and a Vertica, 
yeah, it's going to go help change yeah, and the industry. Yeah, and the software component of that is key. And obviously, IBM has a big software business. You guys have a, we George, had George on, you know, ah, talking about HP fun. software. Yeah. Um, you, you guys have tons of software. It's just sort of buried in all these little pockets. And obviously, he's he's got a real well, great opportunity. He's, he's bringing yeah. all of that together in the Haven announcement. Yes, and the Haven announcement, the analytics piece, we yeah. see that as, as key. You know, Oracle, they got, obviously got software expertise, but they don't want to be a horizontal platform player. Right. They really don't, that's yep. not their, their game. So it's really you guys and IBM going after this big platform play. And then of course you've got Amazon coming in, which is interesting. Yep. You know, right now it's test and dev, but that's, we used to say that about VMware, right? So, so the really interesting dynamics, but great opportunities mm -hmm. for HP to really deliver new innovation. Well, not only that, but the other thing that uh, from a dynamic perspective is remember, on the server side, mm -hmm. there's rumor I hear that they may decide not to be in that business anymore. We talk about IBM, IBM spinning correct. out its, well we, you know, we've commented on that. We think that would be a huge mistake for IBM to, to get rid of its Systems X business. I mean, that's a response to Wall Street, to, you know, I mean, it's, it's worse almost than buying back stock and paying a dividend. Okay, that, you can do that, great. It's the stock kinda, goes up kinda, a little bit. But, it's kind of like I've looked at the market and I choose not to play. Well, that, but, but I, you know, that deal looks like it's dead for a little while. Hopefully it's dead, in my mind anyway, completely. Here's, here's, another, reason. here's another reason confidence. why. Well, you, if you look at the flash opportunity and just start th thinking about flash and storage and servers coming together and the whole PCIe thing and then beyond PCIe and then, right. and then eliminating you know, disk interface, all that stuff, that's, that's ISS, and that's well, it, Intel. It's, it's, it's I mean, ISS, it's, well, it's something that you guys HBSD aren't giving up on. Or the storage division, yeah. and also the management stuff we're putting but, in place. Because the way our two teams look at it, we look at it across the uh, data center. If I've got storage sitting on a server, and I've got storage sitting on a traditional storage device, I should be able to look at, manage, maintain, yeah. monitor, upgrade that thing as one big pool. Yeah, I guess I'm saying the x86 architecture is key there, just because it's so prevalent, the Correct. huge ecosystem. Correct. You know, so we had, we had, you know, Thumbs down on, on that deal. So, you know, I hope for IBM's sake that they don't spin that out. Of course, you probably well, I was going to say, I think, I think for our sake they do. But kidding aside, I mean, unlike everybody else, all the names you mentioned, we're the only teams who's got server storage, networking services, all of the software, and all of the capabilities of delivering it, whether it's through our services organization or through our, our uh, enterprise services group. Yeah, I like the hand we've been dealt. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's good to have another big competitor there too, because it keeps it keeps you so, honest, and you know, you so guys Jim, as we're create a market. Like, there's, a, there's an old line I have to I have to share with you, right? Sure. One lawyer in town, nobody makes any money. Two lawyers, they both get rich. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys aren't giving up on the on the systems business at all, obviously. So, but obviously, moonshot that's what everyone's talking about, certainly on Twitter and all the data mm -hmm. that's grabbing all the headlines. But let's go peek at the rest of the the, the bulk of the business, which is servers, right? Right and networking and storage all bundled in there. Mm -hmm. What is coming down the pike that you could share anecdotally or you know, just frame for the marketplace and the audience out there around servers? Because now, with Moonshot, there's been internal motivation, there's external visibility, the execution is here, the proof points are there. Um, I got a box over here, product line, this product line over here. It's, everything's kind of coming together, HP. You guys put it right. into the cloud, a lot of coordination going on internally. Yep. So share with the folks what's happening next. Uh, so, there is an entire NDA suite over in the corner. I'm going to get my toes as close to the edge without revealing anything inside the NDA suite. But you can start to see a couple of things. One, you're going to see dramatic improvements in terms of management. You're going to start to see how management becomes more unified and how management across the data center becomes something that's a lot more easy to find, easy to deploy, and then also easy to update. You kind of saw some of this already starting to come out with Gen 8 in terms of the intelligence and automation that's going to accelerate. You're going to see a lot more, uh, for lack of a better term, federation of the networking components and also the storage components and how we're going to start to operate and act as one. You guys already know that um, you know in our traditional industry, every 14 to 18 months, somebody comes up with a new processor, but in addition to that new processor launch, we always have some secret sauce components that help separate us from the pack in terms of customer needs. You'll see some of those things occurring in what we're doing with uh, you know, perhaps some of the storage component and some of the energy component. So that's about as far as I can go without you know, taking you into the NDA suite. Well, <laughs> they have an NDA suite uh, here, so he's referring to the group where they all customers go in there, sign the NDA, get a little preview for the top customers. Okay, so that's cool, mm -hmm. that's great. So you kind of laid out your key, key objectives, key areas of, of, of objectives. I want to ask you about management style, because you guys have impressed me and Dave and, and, and a lot of our folks on our team with two things. Bethany Mayer's got this holistic fabric approach underneath. Correct. Uh, SAR has a holistic cloud approach over the top. Correct. And then you got a lot of stuff in between. So the message of coordinating holistically mm -hmm. a 
across those. The, the keeping, I call minding the store, mm -hmm. keeping an eye on things. Yep. Yeah, this group over here, big data. So how are you guys in the middle going to get that tightened up? Because that's well, you're, we, we, you're dead in the center there. How do you manage that? We already are. I mean, if you actually go out to the Moonshot launch pad, you'll see OpenStack running on Moonshot. Uh, so in essence, we have weekly conversations with each of those teams in terms of what do we have on our roadmaps, what do they have on their roadmap. We've got a very uh, tight partnership with Sar and his crew, not just what we're doing on Moonshot, but what we're also doing for our bladed platforms and what we're also doing for the various other components. And then last but not least, you mentioned uh, Bethany's team, which is awesome. Uh, we're extremely tied out, not just on fabrics for today, which include traditional networking and virtual connect, but we're also tying out on fabrics of the future and what we're going to go ju do jointly on the whole software-defined networking yeah. piece. Well, Bethany had a great interview yesterday. We always, I've always been impressed with her, and I, and I think, you know, um, I don't think she's taken enough credit. I mean, they, she was the first one to ship OpenFlow. Yep. She was on the queue. We were actually have, have it on record. She just, you know, she didn't tout that up, and I think she's hum she's kind of humble. She doesn't like to brag, and 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 and, and I, but I think she could take a little more credit there. So yep. she can do that for her, John. Yeah, constructive <laughs> criticism for Bethany. But no, by so, the way, that's a that's a construct that's liking everybody in management. We'd rather do than say. Yeah, well, and Meg, and, and, and you Meg know, she deserves the props. Totally she, absolutely, she totally yes. deserves the props. I don't mean in a negative way. She's yeah. really good. So, so what you're saying is, so how, explain how you're going to be tightening up the the server holistic management view. So, what specifically does that mean? And just coordinating or anything. You you can share. So I have to, uh, so I have to be careful as to how far I, I go in and tell you this, but let's just say today you guys all know all about everything we've done for integrated yeah. lights out, right? So yeah. integrated lights out. If you've got one of our servers, remotely manage it, be able to do things. It's got intelligence, provisioning, active health. It's continuously updating and making sure that people get the best possible performance. Imagine if you could do that across the data center. Imagine if you could do that by looking at what goes on in storage, which three-part kind of already does, because it's simple, it's efficient, it's autonomic. Imagine if you could do that across all your fabrics. Oh, and by the way, imagine if you could do that with your number two OpEx bill, which is everything associated with power. So you've been with us on this journey yeah. all along. The intelligence and automation that you've seen each of the product teams, Imagine when we bring that to bear as collective firepower, how that's going to go again. We reach. So here's what's going to happen, and I'm going to push on my prediction again. So all, you're basically taking labor costs out, and you know, labor. We're taking expense, we're taking complexity, and we're taking time out of the equation. Well, but so, but but much of that time is spent by people. No, that, you know, that's part doing, of it. Doing patches and non-differentiated heavy lifting. That's part of it. Um, and but, so, but, but there's also a huge electricity bill. There's also a huge maintenance sure. uh, time window and right. a whole bunch of other things. Right, so but here's my point. Okay, good. So, you, so uh, let's throw those in too. Mm -hmm. Good points. That investment, which all goes into the what I like to call the container, and I'll okay. put servers in there too, server storage. Okay. There were these big containers. We put all this investment in there, and, and, and the processes and people around that suck away our ability to invest in what we really want, which is data and information, yeah. and to create value. So that, I see your business and the storage business and Bethany's business converging, okay, great. Sort of step Are one, you? and Are then step are. two, it be all <laughs> becomes about the data and the information and how you develop whatever it is, algorithms, mm -hmm. uh, processes around that data to exploit business value. And then how you get into that platform um, is key because OpenStack, we're back to OpenStack. If I can go in as an ISV and add value to that platform, Correct. now your orders of magnitude more productive as an industry, you can't as, do it all. As, as an ecosystem, right. I mean, that's basically in our DNA. We right. want to make sure that others can take some of the innovations that we've already laid as a foundation and build additional innovation that customers will value on top to help go change their business So results. does this software-defined meme change the way in which you market? Um, and in particularly, in particular, how you go after the development community. Uh, so you'll start to see, I wouldn't say changes, but you'll start to see maybe some modifications. And let me give you a real world example, right? So I'll go back to Moonshot. The Pathfinder Innovation Ecosystem, what we decided to do there is we realized, hey, this is a great platform. We may not know all the possible applications or all the use cases. So we got 24 other industry leaders to basically stand up and say, look, we really believe in this platform. Mm -hmm. We're going to come together as a collective community and we're going to go try to figure out, hey, what are some of the things that we really want to go after from a workload perspective to go address those major issues? Take that same model, apply it at the data center piece, and I loved how you laid in the OpenStack components, server storage networking services, and then the partnership ecosystem underneath. 
all that's going to do is go accelerate that. And you know who ends up winning in this whole thing? Our customers yeah, customer. and our channel partners. Because if, if you're right, if you can go in and grab granular services and apply them to different applications, different use cases, quickly, the whole cost thing just explodes. So, do you see, I mean, we've been squeezing blood from the stone for the last decade, mm -hmm. you know, since, it's really since 9-11. Since um, and so, do you see the IT investment paradigm changing, where people actually begin to see IT as more of a competitive differentiator? Could this thing actually start growing again yeah. at substantial yeah. levels? Actually, there are a couple, and so, you know, I spent a lot of time this week with multiple partners and customers and various others. Matter of fact, I had three this morning. There were some that are already starting to operate that way. They see IT as a differentiator. In some cases, for like hyperscale, IT really is their business. Yeah, they're monetizing it. Yeah. Exactly, so the bottom line is, that trend has already commenced. I see that trend accelerating because the old days of, hey, this is really an infrastructure or a service that we provide to others, most CIOs now are starting to be seen as partners to the line of business owners. They're starting to see IT as a true differentiator. And yeah, IT is being run as a true business because back to your very salient point, the capital that they could have used to buy additional floor space, equipment, admins, paid their power bills, they're not going to go use that for their own internal innovation to go help drive much better business results. All right, Jim Gantier, hey, we're gonna, we got to go, we got to, the, the planes are lining up on the, at the oh, land here, <laughs> here at theCUBE, so uh, yeah. we always love to have you on, because oh, no, you're no. just you guys awesome. Are great. You're a senior executive here at HP, setting the standard, really putting together a great program. We have been there from the beginning, it's been fun to watch, you know, Gen A, Moonshot, among, among other things, you guys are executing. It's fun, to, fun, to, fun ride for us. Yep. Thanks for having us and, and being a part of theCUBE. No, no, thanks um, for being here at Discover with checking, us. Checking all the boxes, software-defined mm -hmm. networking, software-defined servers, software to find storage, next up, software to find data centers. So, yep. so we will keep watching and we'll be reporting. This is theCUBE, this is SiliconANGLE, we've uh, exclusive coverage of HP Discover. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks guys.